And can we also have uh, Admel, Mentor, and Cosmiac ready? Yeah, hello, I'm uh, Duli Ari, I'm with Sita Technology. Uh, we're based out in uh, Israel, uh, and we work in the United States with uh, National Hybrid and some other companies. Um, we offer a 1553 IP cores. Um, we're currently orbiting the uh, moon with our uh, IP core uh, on board LRO. Uh, we offer uh, few, uh, several types of IP cores, uh, some of them for avionics uh, systems. Uh, the simple front end with very simple interface doesn't require any CPU or any uh, software interface. Uh, and software integration. The other one, uh, the BRM 1553D, is a DDC compatible uh, IP core, so uh, it can be used on any system that was using DDC components before, and it's uh, almost 100% compatible. We have IP cores for space that are in use by NASA and some other uh, space uh, applications uh, for BC and for RT, and we are currently also combining the DDC interface into the uh, uh, extended reliability cores, so we will have those for uh, space as well. Some of the uh, key features of our IP cores is that uh, they consume very small uh, space of the uh, FPGA uh, relatively to the other uh, existing IP cores. Um, it's pure VHDL and state machine design, so uh, very, very reliable. Uh, we can work with any clock frequency that you have so we can synthesize the core to any clock frequency that you will have on your uh, board. So, for example, if your CPU runs at 100 or 50 megahertz or whatever frequency you have, we can synthesize our core to work at the same frequency, so we don't add any, uh, any uh, uh, clock domain to the design. We can work with any transceiver that exists out there, um, and also with any FPGA that exists. Um, so far we have not found any FPGA that we can't work with. As I said, DDC core compatible with DDC drivers, so if you already made your uh, previous products uh, using some other components, then uh, you can simply uh, use now the core with FPGA and very smoothly uh, will work. Uh, the front end core does not require any CPU because it's a very, very simple interface to the back end, um, and so it reduces the, the integration and the system size. The ERL, the extended reliability core, uh, can recover actually from any uh, unknown state in simulation. So if you had, uh, even on radar uh, components, the input is still one. So if you have some unexpected inputs, some crazy inputs, uh, which you want to simulate as X on your input, and after a few clocks the entire design in simulation becomes X, when it becomes back, uh, the, the information on the input comes back, uh, reboot, then uh, the core will uh, uh, recover from that. All cores are provided with some new technologies that we develop uh, for uh, monitoring uh, the bus. I'll just go through this uh, very quickly. So uh, when there is a, a bad connection on the bus, uh, then some of the energy is reflected. We measure uh, this energy and uh, we can provide uh, the user with an actual uh, where the failure is. So uh, thank you very much. Come see this in, the, in our booth. And, uh, be happy to discuss all the course with you.